but I pray that you will see something that maybe you have not seen before. Amen. Matthew chapter 8. We're going to look at verses 5 through 13. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. All right, reads as follows. It says, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Let us pray. But we thank you, Father, for who you are in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, as always. Lord, today as I stand here and proclaim your word, decrease all of me and increase all of you. Holy Spirit, have your way. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we do pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you're taking notes on today, I'm coming from the topic, Amazing Faith. Amazing Faith. As I mentioned, we're still in our faith series on today. Uh, this is part eight of uh, this series. We have been in this series the entire year of 2020. This is part eight of this faith series entitled Amazing Faith. Many of us have heard the song Amazing Grace, where it talks about how God uh, saved us from his wrath and how he saved individuals like ourselves. And we should uh, be thankful and have a sense of gratitude uh, of his amazing grace. Uh, but today, we are uh, not just going to talk about his amazing grace, but we're going to talk about amazing faith. Faith that was so amazing, grace said it, that it even amazed Jesus. Yes, Jesus. The, the one that when you read your Bibles when it's in red, the and let you know he's the one that's speaking. That, that Jesus, the one who came from heaven down to earth as a model to us as far as how we should live. Yes, that Jesus, the Son of God and God in the flesh. Yes, I'm talking about that same Jesus. He was amazed at the faith of this centurion. Let's look at the text and let's talk about it. Let's Let's walk the text this morning. Verse 1, it tells us that Jesus made his way to uh, Capernaum when he was approached by a centurion. Now, a, a centurion was a soldier that had and that oversaw soldiers of at least a hundred of them. And this centurion was most likely uh, stationed near or at Capernaum. 
Now, this, this, this centurion here, Grace Center, um, he is a, a Gentile, right? This, this centurion who is a Gentile approached Jesus because he must have heard about Jesus. He made his way to Jesus because maybe someone told him about what Jesus could do. Now, according to the text, um, he, he never experienced Jesus for himself, but he at least heard about him. And since he heard about him, he made his way to him. You see, Grace Center, many of us have not only heard about Jesus, but many of us have experienced Jesus for ourselves. And since we have experienced him for ourselves, it's important that we make our way to him when we need him. As Lady Tanya was saying earlier, you know, there are a lot of lowercase gods out there. But there's only one big case G God Amen. in the world. Amen. We need to make our way to Jesus when we are in need. And Right here, we see this centurion he makes his way to Jesus. Now, once this centurion uh, hooks up with Jesus, watch this, he begins to tell him about his servant. Mm -hmm. You see, it's one thing to, to meet Jesus, Grace Center. It's, it's one thing to, to hook up with Jesus, but can I recommend that while you're, while you're meeting him and while you get hooked up to him, that you at least tell him what you are in need of. There's an old school song that's entitled uh, uh, Jesus on the Main Line. Tell them what you want. Uh, while, while, while Jesus is on the main line, Grace said, I think it's best if you tell them what you want. So the, the, the centurion, he meets Jesus and he tells him how his servant is sick. Watch this. The, the centurion could have been selfish. He could have been selfish. He, he could have given Jesus his, his laundry list of things and prayer requests for himself, but yet he told Jesus about his servant. In other words, instead of him telling Jesus about everything about himself, what he needed and what, and what I want and, and, and what's going on in my life and the me, myself, and I syndrome, in other words, he told Jesus Jesus about someone else. He meets Jesus and tells Jesus about his servant. Watch right here. After he told Jesus about his servant, watch the response of Jesus in verse number seven. It says, And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. So watch this. Jesus did not question the man, he just said, I'll come and heal him. Okay. There are no questions from Jesus. He just simply said, I will come and I will heal him. And watch this. Jesus, he, he didn't say that I'm going to send someone else to take care of this. Uh, he, he, said, he didn't say, I'm, I'm going to send Peter. He didn't say, I'm going to send Andrew. He didn't say, I'm going to send Thomas. But yet, he said, I'm going to personally come myself. And Grace said, whenever a healing takes place, don't, don't get it twisted. Don't, 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 don't get it wrong. Healing, it comes from God. God can use men and women as, as vessels, as instruments mm -hmm. to perform the healing. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, healing, it comes from God. God is the one who heals. Mm -hmm. You know, you have these people with these titles of faith healers and all this and that. Baby, he is an instrument. Uh -huh. You're just a vessel being used by God. No man, no woman can heal in and of themselves. All healing comes from God. Amen. After Jesus told the centurion that 
Uh, he would come and heal him, and he would come himself. The centurion uh, told him not to come. He told Jesus that uh, he wasn't worthy and that Jesus should not come under his roof. But why would he feel so unworthy? Why would he say something like that? Well, watch this. The centurion was a Gentile, meaning that he was not a Jew. And being that he was a Gentile, Jesus uh, when he told him that he would come under his roof because he realized that Jewish people in those days, the, the, the centurion realized that the Jews did not want to be associated with the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Because in their eyes, when they looked at Gentiles, they, they would consider themselves impure if they were to come in their homes. Mm -hmm. So the centurion was being courteous to Jesus. Uh, but at the same time, watch this, Jesus already knew that he was a Gentile, but yet and still he was willing to come to his house. I say that kind of fast, so we slow down a little bit here. Uh, Jesus already knew that the centurion was a Gentile. As I said before, in those days, uh, uh, the Jews and the Gentiles the Jewish people wanted to keep the Gentiles separate from them. Mm -hmm. They considered the Gentile people as uh, not worthy individuals. Mm -hmm. But Jesus already knew that the man was a Gentile. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Jesus is a Jew. Mm -hmm. The man is a Gentile. But yet still, although Jesus knows that the centurion is a Gentile, Jesus was still willing to go in the house of a Gentile. Amen. Jesus was willing to break the traditions of, of man. Mm -hmm. he, he was willing to break traditions, watch this, to heal one person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Grace, if you don't hear anything else I have to say today, hear this right here. God loves you. And he cares for you. And he'll do work, whatever he has to do to set you free. Mm -hmm. He loves you so much that he'll break different types of rules to set you free. Yes. And we know that he'll do that because he did that over 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. You see, this centurion didn't feel worthy because... Jesus was a Jew and he told Jesus not to come under my roof. Do not come in my house. But Jesus was willing to go to his house anyway. Mm -hmm. Jesus was willing, watch this, he was still willing to go to the Gentiles' house anyway. Mm -hmm. Jesus, even today, is willing to come to our houses. Our houses, and and I'm, I'm not just just talking about a, a physical structure yes, with a roof and, and and doors and 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 windows, but I'm talking about your spiritual house. Yes, Lord. Jesus didn't care if he was a Gentile or not. Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus doesn't care, Grace said, if you're if you're black or white. Uh -huh. Doesn't care if you're Asian or Hispanic. Doesn't care if you're young or you're old. That's right. Doesn't care if you're, you're rich or you're poor. Doesn't care if you're skinny or you're big boned, like they call back in the country. He do not even care <laughs> about any of that. Mm -hmm. Jesus is still willing to come into your house. Amen. But also, also hear this centurion, after he told Jesus uh, not to come under his roof, he, he told Jesus that um, the only thing he had to do was speak a word. Mm -hmm. Speak a word. That's, that's all you have to do, Jesus, is to speak a word. He said, Jesus, you don't have to come to my house. You don't have to cross the threshold of my doors. You don't even have to come and lay hands on him. But the only thing you have to do is speak a word. Mm -hmm. Because I know that if you speak a word, my servant will be healed. Amen. 
In other words, the centurion was saying, I believe it without seeing it. Mm -hmm. I believe it without seeing it. And the only reason I believe it is because you said it. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Now, if, if, if you don't say it, Jesus, I won't believe it. But if you say it, I'm going to believe it. And Grace says, there are some of you who has a word over your lives, and God has already spoken it, and you may not see it yet, but the word has been spoken. It has not manifested yet, but the word has been spoken. You see, a lot of things, and it takes place, and it's already happened in the spirit realm, but it just has not manifested in the natural realm. You see, we, we live in this, in this three-dimensional world right now. And we are restricted by time. Okay, we, we are restricted by time. We, we have a cap on time. Um, and since we are restricted by time, we can only go so far because of time. I know we sprung forward last night. But yet we're still restricted by time. You see, God is not restricted by time. So he can, he can go far and do a lot because time cannot hold him. But since time can hold us, what we have to do is depend on faith and patience. Faith and patience. Watch this. James said it like this. Thank you, James, for saying this for us. He said, the trying or the testing of your faith worketh patience. Uh -huh. Then he said, let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Uh -huh. You see, if we use our faith and learn to wait on God, uh, the things we're waiting for, they will eventually manifest. Mm -hmm. That they will eventually manifest itself from the supernatural realm and make its way into the natural. Mm -hmm. But you can't use, well, you can't lose your faith in the process. Amen. And you cannot be impatient in the process. Mm -hmm. Because the word that God has spoken over you, it will eventually come to pass. Because watch this. The word says that um, when the word goes out, it cannot return back into God void. Mm -hmm. In other words, it cannot come back to God empty. Mm -hmm. So when the word goes out, when it comes back to God, it's going to fulfill the thing in which it was tailor-made and designed to do. It's like a boomerang. Uh -huh. When you throw a boomerang, it will go out uh -huh. and it will come back. Uh -huh. So when God speaks his word, it will come back to him, uh -huh. but it will not come back to him empty or void. Amen. It's going to fulfill the thing that it is designed to fulfill. I'm teaching and preaching Amen. real good right through there. Amen. <laughs> Watch this right here. This centurion, he may have understood that. Mm -hmm. So he said, Jesus, all you have to do is speak a word. Mm -hmm. He goes on in verse number nine, and it says, uh, For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. All right? So watch this. Uh, what this centurion here is saying, Grace Center, is that he understood authority. All right? He, he knew what it was like to be under someone, and he knew what it was like to have individuals under him. So since he, he knew what authority was and what it looked like, uh, uh, he knew Jesus was the one that had complete authority. But watch this. The centurion's servant is sick. So why would the centurion, 
be talking about authority when his servant is sick. It, 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 it almost seems like this text is out of place. The servant is sick, but yet the, the, this centurion is talking about authority. Well, why is he talking about authority when his servant is sick? Shouldn't he be talking about healing? Shouldn't he be talking about uh, 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 give me the faith to, 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 and the patience to wait for you to heal him? Why is he talking about authority when his servant is sick? Is the text out of place? No, it's not out of place. Watch this. Uh, what's the reason for this comment? Watch this. Well, his servant is not able to shake this sickness that he's having right now. The centurion is not able to heal the servant. Hmm. Therefore, since the sickness has his servant, the centurion recognized that Jesus <laughs> is the only one hmm. that has authority over the sickness. Oh, so I like that right there. Oh, okay. All right. All right. He said, Jesus, I, I know what it's like to have authority over something and to have people under me. And this sickness that my servant has, I cannot do anything about it myself. And the reason that I know you can do something about it is because you're the one that has authority over it. Great Center, God has authority over past present and future sicknesses and diseases. Right. He has authority over ADHD. Uh -huh. He has authority over a learning disorder. Mm -hmm. He has authority over high blood pressure. Right. He has authority over diabetes. Yeah. He has authority over a heart defect. Yeah. He has authority over back pains. He has authority over migraine headaches. He has authority over evil spirits. He has authority over perverted spirits. He has authority over voodoo. He has authority over soothsayers. He has authority over witchcraft. He has authority over devil and all of those little imp in hell. He has authority over all of them. And this centurion knew that Jesus had authority. He said, you don't have to come to my house. I know you have authority. All you have to do is just speak a word. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So he, he said, speak a word and I know that he'll be healed. When, when Jesus hears this, uh, watch what Jesus does in verse number 10. It says, when Jesus heard it, he marveled. And he said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. When Jesus saw this, he was amazed. The faith of this centurion, it blew the mind of Jesus. Now, the question is, Rachel, how many of us can blow the mind of Jesus? How many of us can amaze Jesus with our faith? How many of us have made Jesus say, wow, by us using our faith? And if you are a believer, you have faith. The word says that every believer has a measure of faith. All right? So the measure of faith that I have, it, it may be different than the measure of faith that you may have. But if you are a believer, when you became a believer, the Holy Spirit came by and dropped some faith into you. All believers have a measure of faith. Yes. The Living Bible 
says Hebrews 11, 1, it says, it is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. Mm -hmm. That's faith. Mm -hmm. It is the, 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 the certainty that I believe is going to happen. Amen. I'm going to release my faith for it. I'm going to believe God that it's going to happen. I don't care how long it takes, what it looks like. I'm going to amaze God at my faith. If he has given me a measure of faith, I'm going to use the faith that I have. This centurion, this, this Gentile soldier amazed Jesus with his faith. His, his faith was so amazing that Jesus turned to the crowd and he said, you know, I haven't seen this type of faith even in all of Israel. In other words, you're saying, I haven't seen this type of faith amongst my own people. My Lord. Okay, so I'll get bumped just for one second. It's about to get bumped for one second. He, he turned to the crowd that was following him and he was like, this is a Gentile. But my own people who are following me, you will not have the faith that this Gentile person has. Mm, Jesus. It's like the world will go out there and do great things. Mm -hmm. The movers and shakers building this, mm -hmm. building that, starting this, starting that, mm -hmm. taking over this, taking over that. Mm -hmm. They are movers and shakers making it happen. Mm -hmm. But yet the church, mm -hmm. My Lord. we sit still and say, God, I'm waiting on you. Mm. And, 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 and God said, no, no, I'm, I'm waiting on you. Mm -hmm. the, the, the world is making things happen. And we're looking around, looking at the world, and we get mad at the world, but yet we should move in the faith that we have. We, we're the ones that have a measure of faith. <laughs> right? The world, what they do is they take risks mm. by doing things. Mm. But believers, we have faith to move in the faith that we have that God has given us. Mm. So we cannot be jealous at the world when the world are doing things. Mm. Jesus was like, where is the faith among our own people? My Lord. And I'm pretty sure that's what God is saying today. He's like, where is the faith that I have given you? If the world can go out and do these different things, what are you waiting for? Mm -hmm. Why are you on the sidelines? Mm -hmm. I already spoken the word. You have a word over your life, but all you have to do now is just walk it out. Yes. Yeah, it is not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. That's right. That's why I have to give you the full picture of the, of the road map in which you're going to walk. Because if I give you the full picture of what will happen up ahead, you will not take the first step. That's what God does with us. He will give us step-by-step -step instructions. It's almost like your GPS has a turn-by-turn -turn navigation system. It knows where you're headed. You already punched in the destination, so it knows where you're going. But the GPS is not going to give you the entire thing all at once. Uh -huh. It's going to give you turn by turn directions to get to where you need to go. Yeah. That's just like God. Our, our God position is just thank the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. He will give us turn by turn signals of where we need to go. Mm -hmm. We take one step to give us another direction. Mm -hmm. We take another step to give us another direction. We take another step to give us another direction. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us, we're not taking any steps. We're afraid to get off of the boat. We want to play it safe on the sidelines. But God is saying, if you take one step, yeah. I'm going to give you clarity to take the next step. Yeah. But if I haven't given it to you yet, just wait on me. Uh -huh. It's not the time right now. You just wait, just like James said, faith and patience. Yeah. Take the first faith move, but be patient to wait on the next set of instructions. Amen. So this, this centurion amazed 
Jesus with his faith. Alright, so what was the end result of, of, of all of this here? What's the end result? Let's get down to verse number 13. It says, and, and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. So watch this. I said this earlier, that is, um, you can use your faith for others. Right? Nowhere in the text does it even tell us that the servant asked for the healing? Okay. There, 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 there's nowhere in your Bibles, and I promise you, when you slept last night, I did not go to your house and scratch something in your Bibles. There's, there's, there's nowhere in your Bible that, that tells us the servant asked for the healing. Right? You see, we have family, we have friends, we have co-workers and neighbors who may need a healing of some kind. And some of, some of them know they may need some type of, of healing. And watch this. Some of them may be just too stupid to know the lifestyle that they're living, that they're headed in the wrong direction. Jesus. Right? But for the church, for the believer, we can pray that they can be delivered from the lifestyle or the, 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 the ailments and the things that they're going through, right? So watch this. We know, we can know that somebody even prayed for us. Look, we're here on a Sunday morning. We, we could have slept in and we, we missed an hour of sleep. I didn't get no sleep that night at all. I'm th I woke up this morning just when I, I think I said about 30 minutes last night. I said, can I lay down and get some get some sleep today? But but watch right here. I know somebody throughout my lifetime prayed for me. Yeah. I can I, I can look over my life and know that somebody sent up a prayer to God on my behalf. Mm -hmm. Somebody prayed for you all in here today. Amen. Whether it's your mother, your daddy, or Big mom, somebody prayed mm -hmm. for you, right? Jesus, Jesus, he, he healed this servant without permission from the servant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Jesus healed the servant without the servant's permission. Grace and that God has the ability to heal and deliver your loved ones because of your faith without their permission. Amen. That's a light bulb for somebody right there. You probably hear that as I say that. That's probably for somebody here today. Yes, Lord. Yes. God has the ability to deliver someone, mm. to heal someone, to set someone free, mm -hmm. even without their permission. Mm. And it's because of the faith that you have. It is all throughout the Bible where it talks about, especially in the New Testament, of how individuals using their faith on behalf of somebody else. So you can use your faith on behalf of somebody else to heal them, to set them free, and to get them delivered. Yes. Your, your, your family, your friends, they can be sinning one day mm. and saved the next. My Lord. All because you had enough crazy faith to believe that God can heal that individual that was, that was on drugs, that, that drug addicted relative. You mm. believe that God could take that perverted lifestyle from that individual and that God could heal that person of HIV or AIDS or different kind of diseases or, or ailments. Mm -hmm. One day they'll be sick. The next day they'll be healed. Mm -hmm. One day they'll be raising their hands in the club. The next day they'll be raising their hands in the church. Yeah, One day they'll be drunk off alcohol. The next day they'll be drunk off Jesus. Mm -hmm. One day they'll be addicted to drugs. The next day they'll be addicted to the Lord. One day they'll be sleeping in somebody else's bed. And one day they'll be sleeping in their own bed. And it's all because you had the nerve 
and the unmitigated gall to believe God and you took God at his word. Mm -hmm. I'm closing now. Verse number 13, it, 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 it talks about uh, how Jesus told him to go that his servant was going to be healed. Now the centurion didn't see it because his servant was in front was in front of his servant, or the centurion was in front of his, his servant. So he didn't see the healing at that time. But Jesus told him to go, and his servant would be healed. All right? But but he he had to believe that what Jesus said was done. You see, Grace Center 2020, we need to make 2020 a year that we walk by faith. Amen. We need to make 2020 that we say God, or we make God say wow at the amazing faith mm -hmm. that we use. Mm -hmm. You may not have all of the details. You, you're not going to have all of the answers. You're not going to have everything that you need in the beginning. And God is going to stretch some of us. He's going to stretch some of you. And it's not going to make any sense. This centurion, if he would have stayed in front of Jesus and said, Jesus, I know you told me to go, but I cannot see my servant being healed. He never would have saw his servant being healed. Jesus told him to go. If he would have stayed there and said, Jesus, you told me to go. You said he's healed, but I can't see it with my physical eyes. If he never would have went, he would have never seen this servant being healed. In other words, this centurion had to go in order to see it. And some of you have to go in order to see it. Some of you have to take a leap of faith in order for you to see what God is going to do. Amen. I, I used an analogy of a few years ago about how small kids, they would get up on you know, high stuff. And they just want to jump off with no fear. They... they have no fear. Those small kids have, 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 have no fear whatsoever. They just want to jump off and they think they're going to be okay. They're, they're not thinking about getting hurt, getting injured, or any repercussions about jumping off of stuff. And sometimes with the, the, the grown-up, especially with, 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 with the dads, when the mothers are not around, <laughs> we'll have the kids up on something we'll be like, go ahead and jump. I'll catch you. Go, go ahead and jump. Daddy is going to catch you. Um, um, and if the child never jump, they won't really know if the father is going to catch them or not. You see, God wants us to take a jump. Yeah. And if we don't take a jump, we won't know if God is going to catch us or not. But when God says, say jump, Go ahead and jump. Because God cannot lie. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have the concept of lying. Lying is not an attribute, a, a, a characteristic of God. It's, it's impossible for God to lie. It, he, he cannot even conjure up a lie. He cannot think of a lie. It, it, it's not in his DNA. If he has DNA. He, God cannot lie. So if he tells you to jump, he said, I'm going to catch you if you jump. So go ahead and jump, daughter. Go ahead and jump, son. <laughs> I felt that right there. He said, if you jump, I promise you, I'm going to catch you. And when you jump, watch this, I'm not going to drop you. Use the faith that you have and blow my mind with the faith that I gave you. I will not give you something that I don't expect you to use. Yes. So when it's time to move, 
move. When it's time to jump, jump and amaze me. Make me stand still yeah. at the faith in which you already have. 